once the the public show of keeping face was down behind closed doors my wife would kick off hi guys welcome to the lovely DAC city or DAC town as I like to call it where we're actually continuing the story of my journey here in Thailand and the last two episodes have kind of brought us to Tak town and as I said we were living outside with relatives and I thought, okay, let's, let's give it a go here and dag. So we dumped on the cousin's motorbike the next morning and she dropped us off just over there. It was right at this point. I remember it like yesterday. It was kind of the start of my journey here in, uh, in Dak 20 years ago. Things were great then. I was in the honeymoon period, but we needed a place to rent. So we headed on down that street. This uh, ice shop still uh, causing traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> it was full of internet shops, PlayStation shops. People didn't really have PCs in the home as much back then. And we stopped for something to eat in this little restaurant, I remember. And just next door, well, a couple of shops down, we noticed a sign. I can actually still see a sign up. Yeah, I think they've still got a place for rent. And we saw it was a, an advert for a, a townhouse. So we had a little chat and they, he just followed this old lady. <laughs> Across the street at this exact point. We're like, where's she taking us? Where did you go? Jam day, mate? <laughs> yeah, this was a very busy place. This was before the internet. I used to pick up my Bangkok post from there. And, uh, wow, yeah, this was the hub of the town. It was the big paper shop, and it's kind of deserted now. Everything's done on the internet. So she led us down this little soy. God, this brings back some memories. <laughs> I haven't been down here for 20 years. And I remember this house on the corner was like the big the big family, the, the rich the Thai Chinese, they never spoke to us. And they've got the same BM actually. I'm not gonna talk too much, but yeah, these were like the big, big boys on the block. And there was a lovely lady in this house who uh, my wife got on with. And this was like gossip corner. They'd all sit, the neighbors would sit around here. They're probably all different now. So, it was this one here, the second one. This one here. Oh, the car. Oh, it's very different now. But we, we rented this place here. And it had granite floors. I could teach in the front. We had a bedroom up the top. And I remember having a cigarette up there and just thinking, yeah, we can do something here. Ah! Hello, how are you? This is one of the old neighbors. I'm good, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> oh, Jam, Jam Dai Mai? Jam Dai, Jam. Oh, okay, Thai. No, no. no, I remember you, yes. Yisipi, Yisipi Leona. Doni Kat, Kat Yu Pilok. Chai, Doni Ben, Doni Ben Payaban. Song, Sam Si Kon, Kui, Kui. That was the, uh, that was the gossip corner. Yeah, Yisipi Leona. Ah, oh, Thai. Oh, oh dear. Don't eat con gay, no? Con gay. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Thai. Jam, can you hang song? Hang song, yeah, I was in the second one. Hang song, hang song. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, they still remember me. I used to have a cigarette up there. And uh, Kapun Ka Chai Ben Kung Ku, me, me, Hong Lien, you need Yisip, Yisip Bilo, Yisip Kabilo. You jet Bilo? Tanon Yang Mama, Yisip Bilo, Tanon Yang Mama. Okay, Kap, come on, Kap. Yeah, I remember back then there was no, uh, there was no concrete. Nice memories. Um, teaching there, I started doing a little, taught some local kids and it was fun. Just did a, a few hours a day. Uh, 
I really enjoyed it and that was where the seed to actually stay long term in Thailand came from I mean it was just fantastic these guys used to sell in the market I remember I used to pass my uh, pass my classroom every day and yeah I didn't want to go nosing around in there it's, I mean they, I'm still a stranger but wow that brought back some memories so in total we spent just over a year there and we made a lot of big decisions we decided to get married that girlfriend was finishing her law degree and open university and I had a happy time teaching and to put it in historical perspective it was I remember watching the second plane go in and on 9-11 in uh, September 2001 so it was a fair while back yeah it was a happy time uh, so a lot of a lot of good memories there but the stressometer did go up hey not the best place <laughs> yeah a bit of a bit of a wrong decision coming out of here our temper dogs all right we've come to the only place where I, I think there aren't any dogs or tile cutters or building works going it's the uh, it's the wonderful Dak sewage facility and uh, should be on everyone's bucket list <laughs> luckily I'm wearing a face mask so yes the stressometer went up a bit yeah this is kind of when the cultural differences started to rub up against my Western psyche and I'm rubbish at saving face. Look at it. You can almost take a dip in there, can you? Lovely. I had a huge issues with it. We had, uh, well, we put out the, the, the call that we're looking for land, we're going to build a house. We had some distant relatives coming around for the monthly motorbike payments. I was jumping up and down like a madman going, nah, 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 nah. We had the... A neighbour trying to sell us, well he did sell us a stereo out of warranty, I was jumping up and down. Students didn't pay up, a couple of them. And I was jumping up and down like a madman losing face and I was useless. And it was putting my wife under a lot of stress because in Thailand you don't lose your call. And she was under pressure. Things aren't done like that here. I'd be jumping up and down trying to get things sorted out and then coming off worse, looking actually worse than the people that were diddling us or trying to get money off us and it caused a lot of tension we, we worked our way through it but there were arguments once the the public show of keeping face was down behind closed doors my wife would kick off she'd been put in these uncomfortable positions I didn't understand the culture and it, it did cause friction from from quite an early stage but we talked through it we were still in love uh, I still have problems with it, but I know how to play the game of face or saving face now. It's taken me nearly 20 years, but you know, we'll get there in the end. So the stressometer had gone up, but I was still in love with the place. We'd worked things through. But uh, jealousy uh, came into play, and I would say I've heard a lot of stories from other guys who've had similar issues with their Thai partners on jealousy and I think it's to do and I, I, I don't like generalizing but in terms of Thailand I think you can it's not like the West whether you've got a melting pot full of different cultures and with Thai women there is an insecurity there because Thai men don't have the best reputation <laughs> and uh, probably similar to Italy uh, if you want a Western, Western comparison in terms of mistresses or in Thailand they're called mere noise um, and it's kind of accepted here we had two Mianois in our street actually where the townhouse was and it, it was quite it was it was accepted the, these these girls were in love with the Chinese guys who couldn't marry them so they were just sort of kept in the sidelines so it is quite common here and Thai women do get insecure in relationships so there was a lot of jealousy involved. I had older students that I didn't, I was just teaching them. I didn't see it. There was no flirting, but it was, there was kind of irrational behavior going on. And combining that with the face issues, the stressometer went up a bit. <laughs> so the story continues. It gets a bit more bumpy. <laughs> we moved to another place. 
We have landlord issues, my wife has a few more issues, and I start having more issues. So yeah, stick around for episode, I don't know what we're on now, episode four. And the sun's finally come out, it's been raining quite a lot this uh, cool season. Yeah, memories for sure. And uh, if you want to say, yes, I remember, you say, jam die. And in the negative, I can't remember, it's jam may die, which is happening a lot more to me as I'm getting older. There's Bob in his illustrious glory, and he's looking you know, rather spectacular. Right, there you go. And for you guys that came out in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, you guys had it easy. You had YouTube, uh, Facebook groups, you could kind of get a reference of what to expect when you came out here. But us poor souls in the 90s and well, 80s and early noughties, we just kind of, yeah, we just, you, you found yourself in these situations where, you, yeah, the cultural differences did yeah, rub up against you a little bit. And it, it does depend on a lot of factors, how it affects you. I've gone on about this in, a, in, a, in another video, why expats leave Thailand. But... It is true. I mean, it's very different coming on holiday to a place, even for two or three months, than actually living here, being in a long-term relationship, doing business, uh, building. It's, it's very different. There are things underlying uh, the culture here that can uh, derail guys, depending on your personality. So um, I have used generalizations uh, in this video, but uh, particularly to do with Thai women. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule, uh, but... That's my experience. My wife's experience is a lot of this is I'm taking from my wife, who I did actually uh, ask permission to, to discuss our history. It's kind of history. We laugh a lot about a lot of it now. But uh, I think it's quite important for guys to see what it can be like because it is, as I said, very different to coming out on holiday. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know, I mean, a lot of people are a bit nosy. They like, like seeing what other people, how they got on and, you know, I do as well. Everyone's a bit of a, a voyeur deep down, I reckon. But anyway, I hope it was useful to you and uh, it will continue. So on that note, I say stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video.